Retail therapy. My name's Will Barrett Dudley. How are we today? Oh, I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, just coming to you live on the last day of tax free weekend. Oh, it was a tax free. That's weekend. right. That's right. That's right. If you're listening to this on uh, on Sunday, then that's how you know you're a real shopper. Then uh, then then you're you're maybe you haven't thought about it, but it's time to it's time to get out there and, and buy some stuff that's under one hundred dollars so that you can save eight point two five percent. That's not the worst call. I wish you didn't tell me this. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not going to be around. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you have anything in your crosshairs? Um, No, I'm pretty tapped out on all this uh, Spain trip prep. Yeah, I get it. But uh, I mean, you know, like if uh, Fabricombi re- redoes their 20% off site wide and I get tax free, then I'm, I might swoop. I'm Changes might, things. I'm, I might swoop. Yeah. Changes yeah, things. Yeah, it's a good yeah. time to buy some records, Randy. Because you know I love, you know I love, uh, Stacking. I love I love to stack a code. Yeah. Kind of yeah. kind of live for it. When actually. they let you stack and yeah. you're not sure if they let you stack and then you realize then that, you, oh, I'm stacking right now. Yeah. It's like the best feeling in the world. <laughs> uh yeah. So um so it, you got that going for you. It counteracts the uh shipping notification that says that a label's been created, but Ooh. it's not in the system yet. It's yeah. just like, what's your problem? Yeah. Don't you gotta holster that. Right, right. Do you use the shop app? Of course. I live on the shop app. I never did until this last like year, and now I live on it. And like, yeah, it's probably like my number three most used app. I check it like it's Instagram. Th- at this point, too, it's sad. I'll like <laughs> jump into it and be like, "Oh, I forgot I ordered that." Yes, it's coming. And I'm like, "Oh man, it's too retail therapy coded." Um, I also like pretty much anytime you check out on a Shopify website, you build a little bit of shop cash. Yeah, but no offense to shop, but my shop cash ain't exactly popping. Well, I mean, I have like two dollars and ten cents. Okay, well, I, I, I just somehow I got up to like eight dollars and fifty cents. See, you're you you can and and then Todd Snyder, speaking of code stacking, you can find them on the shop app. They were doing a twenty percent off their sale. I found the perfect D ring black braided belt. I got it for like forty five dollars. Used my nine dollars shop cash. There you go. Whole thing through the shop app. It was just, I mean, it was, you know, it was just, it was brilliant, man. You know, I'm at the point where I don't even believe in getting the shop cash. Like it's not (laughs) happening for me at this point. I, I, I feel like I shop, I online shop as much as anybody. And I feel like I'm pretty, you're just not, you're not stacking shop cash. It's annoying. It should be. Yeah. I don't know. Whenever you have, whenever I have like a, I mean, like we, we both know that a store credit is as good as gone. Like once you have that store credit sitting there, it's like, I have to get this away from me. Right. Right. I just need to go buy something right now. Mm Mm-hmm. I had an experience the other day where I returned something and and uh, I'd never i never experienced this before, but maybe it's more common than I realized just because I don't return things all that often. But uh, it was returned for store credit or essentially return to my credit card and get charged the processing fee. Okay. I was a little bummed. I've not seen that. Yeah, I was like, I mean, I guess I'll take the hit. Right. Yeah. But I don't want to take the hit. Yeah, it's kind of like they they, they I, is that even legal? I would say I I would say no. That like feels, it's that it's feels not illegal. It's not legal to um like I'll put it this way. If you go somewhere and they say uh, we do not take American Express and mm-hmm. they actually can, they just don't want to do the processing right. fees and they're right. just trying to cut down on that. If American Express finds out that that vendor is doing that, they will not be happy with that vendor and possibly like not let them. Interesting. I mean, use I guess I, I, I guess there are places where when you shop, it's final sale and they don't do returns at all. So mm-hmm. so maybe it is totally fine to be like, hey, yeah, we'll do returns, but we're gonna knock off five percent or whatever, three percent. Sure if it's if, it, yeah. if it's in their to uh, toc, I'm sure. Uh, Terms and conditions? Yeah. Terms and terms or of sale? T- TAC. TOS, TOS? I almost said TOS. I don't know, dude. Just if it's in their terms. It's Either in, or. It's Either in their or. T. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot to cover today, so I don't think we should waste too much time here. But you don't want to keep just, you know, shooting the shit. We could. Not knocking it around. Just go for like 15 minutes we on, could. on some bullshit. Okay. No, we, we do have a we lot. We have a lot of listener questions. We've got some other topics to talk about, so let's not even waste any time. First and foremost retailpod.substack.com go subscribe we send out all the listener digests there please go subscribe and enjoy you can also watch all these episodes at youtube.com slash sunday scaries podcast in the description of this episode you can follow us at retail.pod on instagram we're getting close to 20 25k on instagram i saw that we should do a meme we should should do a meme dump with scaries we should request the scaries account and get a meme dump off and just put us over the the goal line i know a guy 
I, I, I think I know a guy as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, scented candles, as always. Velabox.com slash Sunday Scaries. I believe we do still have some of our uh, original scented candle from Retail Therapy on there. We're and getting dangerously close to, dangerously. Uh, to, re- to Retail 002. I don't hate the timeline of when this might come out. Yeah. Like if it, a late summer, early fall uh, scented candle launch is just, it hits so different. Yeah. But before we get into our listener questions, let's hear from our friends over at Bourbon and Beyond in Louisville, Kentucky. You know that Barrett and I are just Louisville boys through and through after our derby experience. <laughs> but September it. 19th through the 22nd at the Highland Festival Grounds at Kentucky Exposition Center in Louisville, Kentucky is Bourbon and Beyond's unique immersive festival experience that includes some of the best music talent in the country, Americana, classic rock, alternative rock, roots, blues, Bluegrass, adult contemporary, but it's not just music. They got a lot, a lot of uh, culinary programming from some of the country's top chefs, along with an array of bourbon tastings and workshops showcasing America's best chefs and Louisville's bourbon and culinary culture. They've got a ton of acts like Sting, Beck, Dave Matthews Band, Tedeschi Trucks Band, Zach Bryan, Cody Jinks, Tyler Childers, My Morning Jacket, Matchbox 20, The National, Whiskey Myers, The War on Drugs, The Beach Boys, Mount Joy, Fleet Foxes. There's so many. For more information on Bourbon and Beyond, please visit bourbonandbeyond.com. They believe in quality over quantity. Please drink responsibly. There's a link to purchase tickets in the description of this episode. Barrett, where do you want to start off with on these listener questions? Um, let's just let's just start right at the top. You know, it's okay. it's, it's a very it's 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 very on brand for us. And um, and but but before we jump in, I will just say. I jotted down every single question that was sent to us. I'm in, I'm very impressed by your uh, thorough thorough from uh, from the from the retail therapy Instagram prompt, um, and I think honestly they were all really good. I'm I'm pretty sure we're going to get to all of them, but not this week. So we've got about half of them that we that we're going to cover this week, and then some of them which had like longer answers or were more kind of pushing into that fall fashion realm. I think we're going to save that for uh, for for next week's episode. Yes. But yes. um, but a lot of good ones today. A lot a, a, a lot that we can that are, that'll be fun to answer. I think and uh, yeah yeah. So the, the, this one, I think uh, I think we have one listener, Tim Aker two, who who basically just wanted our thoughts about a bunch of different brands that I I, I think he's feeling and um and they're they're all kind of in our realm. So he wanted to to, to thoughts on represent. And then he asked about OAS for vacation wear, so that it gives Shane from White Lotus from White Lotus <laughs> Pineapple Room vibes. Um, asked why we never mentioned Kiff. Is it too hype beastie? Do we feel like it's more like Supreme? Uh, where do you want to start on that on that list? Um, OAS. Yeah. Okay. So I get served ads for OAS all the time on Instagram. Uh, I I like the idea of it it's kind of found itself in this area where I get promoted it so much on Instagram, probably for my own behaviors that I almost feel like it's an Instagram brand. And I don't want to feel like that. Like it has this, it has this other layer to it now for me where I'm like, well, I only see this on Instagram. I don't really see it other places. But when I look at the products, I'm like, yeah, I'm into this. I, yeah. I do enjoy it. But there's there's a lot of brands out there like that for me where my first exposure was through like a targeted ad and then I clicked on it because it looked like it had nice products like OAS. But then suddenly I like I see it so often after that I almost get tired of it before I even get to like get into it. Yeah, um, I, I, I ride for OAS. This is I, I, I this is where I, I got a new swimsuit from last summer that mm-hmm. I talked about and that I quite like. What's the inseam game looking like on this? It's like it's like five inches, I want to say. Could could be five and a half. Okay. But it's 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 the right length. Yeah. I think it very approachable, but but it's you know people guys that like shorter inseams should should like this too. Um but not too, but it's not it's not like crazy short. It's not a it's not four it's not four inches like like me and Randy are going to be flexing on our <laughs> on our August vacays. Four inches is so much thigh. <laughs> I love showing thigh as much as anybody. Four um, inches is crazy. And, and I, I don't. I, I also I also snagged a pair of linen pants from OAS. Okay. Last year. Okay. With a with an elastic waist that I quite like. It's got a nice little zipper pocket on the side seam, so it's like you've got your back pockets, you've got your hand pockets, then you've also got a little stash pocket, which which I find really convenient on a on a vacation pant. Um, I don't own any of their shirts, but I will say this, I, I, I hear what you're saying. They do. Sometimes they feel a little bit like a brand that I've kind of salted a little bit called Dandy Del Mar, mm-hmm. which is very much like a, like an Instagram brand. And when I finally gave them a shot, the quality was really lacking, but OAS is now carried at places like stag and yeah. Shopbop, And so I, I think they're get they're, they, They've got a little bit of that 
they're getting co-signed from stores and retailers yeah. that, that know what's up as well. Uh, and I, for the for the price, I've been pretty happy with everything. It's not going to like blow your mind quality wise. You're not going to get it in hand and be like, oh my god, this is so undervalued. Mm -hmm. But I think they do a really nice job design wise, aesthetic wise. The prints on the trunks are good. The they, they've they've got you know I think they're most well known for swim trunks and then the I think so too the vacation tops. Um, like our listener asked about, but um, but they they've got all sorts of like kind of cool like waffle terry shorts and they use in, like they uh, use interesting uh, textures yeah uh, yes. like, as a sub for just like you know totally prints and things like that and it it is nice yeah i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop discounting them in my head because i just see them on instagram more i i'm gonna i'm gonna give them the old college try yeah so i i think oas is is you know like you said it's it's really it's awesome vacation where it's 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 a top brand for me for for looking at for for that type of kind of beachy more tropical vacation for mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. Um, so are, how familiar are, are you with repre represent? I'm not. And I wasn't until I was not until I, uh, saw this listener question and did some research. Yeah. So this is a British luxury streetwear brand that has been around for a long, for quite a while, several years. Um, and I, I'll, I'll say this, there's some stuff from represent that I, that I like, and I think that they have gotten better over the last couple of years, but when they started, what it, what it looked like they were doing to me is kind of like kind of ripping brands like Rude and Fear of God and Amiri. Yeah. Um, and so it it just it felt like a little bit too much like a like a dupe brand. And even now, they they're they represent 247 stuff. It is is just like essentials. Yeah. It's, it's it just looks a, just like it. Yeah. yeah. Exa exactly like it. Um, so that that that's like that's, the stuff's not bad looking, but it all looks like it's just a different version of a product that I've already seen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, some of their graphics feel a little bit derivative. And again, I think that they've gotten better about this. I think that they have expanded more into to, to doing a little bit of their own thing. But they're very, very, very clear. Like, I can just tell who's on their mood boards. I can just see Casablanca yeah. and Amiri and, 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 and Rude and like all these other brands that I think they're just kind of like riding the coattails of a little bit. And, and, and the thing is, it's not cheap. This is not cheap yeah, stuff Yeah, no, it's either. not. It's, it's, I, was, I was somewhat surprised when I first saw the pricing. I mean, it's when you can kind of tell that one company clearly liked another company, decided to start doing the like very similar products. It's it, For me, it's like an immediate ick. It's just like, oh, well, I, like, I know what they're going for here, and I feel like it's just a remake of a product that we're all trying to get, but it was sold out when we got the early access email. Yeah. Not talking about anything in particular. But like, it just happens so often that you kind of like you naturally have your blinders up when something comes along that just looks like something else that's been so in the in the like just topics of discussion. Yeah. So do I, so I, they sell they sell their they have the it, honestly this kind of gives me the same vibe as Kith in a way, which was mentioned in a next yeah. like in the same listener question. With Kith for me, I I mean, do you shop at Kith ever? No. I have bought a few things from them, but the things that I've bought from them have been largely like unbranded things. It's been like I bought some Kith t-shirts that are actually similar to the shirt that I'm wearing now, but I, I don't, I, I intentionally don't really shop for stuff with Kith on it. When I think of Kith, I actually think of shoes more than I think of anything at this point. And I think it's because of their retail experience. If you go to their retail store, you're just, it's mind blowing. Uh, the amount of shoes and the way that the shoes are set up, their selection of shoes, everything. It's just really cool. But if you go online, it's so apparel heavy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like, it's, I, I don't know if I would feel natural wearing a lot of the, the stuff that Kith makes. Like some of it's so, I don't want to say overdone because I don't think that's the appropriate word for it. But some of the stuff just has so much stuff on it that like, I don't, I like having things that might have like one logo or one kind of thing instead of like the oversized one or the, logos on the sleeve in addition to the front and back. And there's just a lot going on sometimes. And I don't always want to be that loud, but I do think that a lot of things that they do are cool with a different perspective and, and interesting, but it's still not something that I, I shop that often or even go to that often at this point. Yeah. Um, I think I've told this story before, but the, when back in 2018 or 19, or maybe even 17 was when I first started started shopping uh, Ame Leon Dor. Um, and I started getting involved in like the, the, the online communities that were also interested in it. It was really interesting because so many people 
that were into ALD had come from that lineage of yeah. su- they were shopping Supreme and then they were shopping Kith. Yeah. And then they kind of like, quote unquote, graduated to ALD where I feel like I had gone the opposite way. I was like shopping John Elliott and all these Barney's brands and then kind of found ALD on like a almost like more approachable, more wearable yeah. like, foothold basically. Yeah. But so it, the, to yes, the, the short answer is I have always felt especially several years ago the kith was like a little too hype beastie and it that, is. That, that ties into what you're saying they all they plastered their label on everything mm-hmm. they 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 were um it's it, it was really really loud i wasn't interested in and still really am not interested in collaborations with bmw or coca-cola or marvel or like any but of these their, like massive companies that they that they do collabs with either so they blow my mind with the collabs that they get i mean they they get all the big names um now to to say some nice things nice things about Kith, uh, I, th- you know, a, as we've kind of talked talked a little bit about some of ALD's quality drop off, I've heard that Kith is is boosting their quality or or really keeping it very consistent. The and stuff lot- that I've purchased from them has been great quality, and not just that, the packaging that it comes in is nice. Like every, it's a very it is a very high end shopping experience. Yeah, um, and and a, a lot of their mainline kind of like you know their 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 own clothing line like looks pretty good these days. Yeah. I think they've really toned down the branding. It's just, I, I don't know what it will take for me to, to kind of get the me over the ledge to finally give some of their stuff a shot. Mm-hmm. Probably, honestly, going in store. and, and Their, sto- their and store experience is wild. It's really cool to go in the, one of the stores. Um, just because I'm, I'm also not positive how great their customer service and like shipping and returns yeah. process is. I do think that they let you return, but... Um, yeah, it's, uh, and as we're kind of going through the page here, it it's all still pretty, I'm seeing a lot that I'd click on. Yeah, but it's, it's, but um, it's still in your face. It's like, in your face. Like yes. there's yes. You, people know you're yes. wearing Kith. Yeah. Uh, and I will say, and, and I'm, this is a compliment and I don't think anyone would misconstrue it as not being like, what I like about Kith is that the company has a DNA. They've been around long enough that I'm like, they know what they're doing that to the point where I think I can trust them if I like something. Um, but they really haven't changed what their style is since I discovered them. And since I started kind of following them, like even the stuff that you see today on their website, I'm like, that looks like, yeah, that's Kith. Like they have, their DNA has not changed. Like Ronnie Feig has done a good job of keeping it all in the same vein, all in the same direction. And I don't think that there's that much deviation from it. That's like driven by significantly driven by overly driven by trends like yeah, sure, they sure. they know what they do and they do it um and whether you like it or not is up to you but um they really haven't changed much and yeah. i and i respect that because i think that they do have like a vision that they're seeing through and again their their collaborations blow my mind where i'm like oh yeah you guys would have an olympics thing like you guys would have coca-cola um, just, you know, I've got this, some, these pocket tees pulled up. Like this is the type of thing that absolutely would have had like a massive cursive Kith logo on the back four years ago. Correct. You or know? just a b- giant like Kith cursive logo on the pocket. Or on the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. So they, 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 they definitely have, have, you know, shifted a little bit of that to, to, I think to appeal more to the ALD guy, mm-hmm. most likely. Yeah, probably. Uh, I but, think um, most people these days, I think a lot of guys like in our demographic enjoy not having too many logos on them. Like I think graphic teaser as far as a lot of people want to go at this point. And then after that, like you don't want to be dr- decked out in logos. It just, it comes off as gaudy if you're not in the right situation. Can't be I, the guy. I don't want to be the guy at the group dinner with like a giant, like ornate jacket on yeah, where everyone's yeah. like, wait, why is Will wearing like <laughs> a spray painted Kith jacket yeah. at like this, like, I don't know, $2 sign Italian <laughs> restaurant. Like what's going on? Um, how, how do the, how do the modeling campaigns for Kith work for you? Like, that's another thing that I think while it, I, while it's cool, I'm not sure that getting Steve Buscemi and Adrian Brody and Jerry Seinfeld and whatever other like 60 year old New York old dude from the Bronx, like that doesn't necessarily, it doesn't sell me necessarily. I think you, when choosing an old dude to try to deck out, you really have to wonder, you have, you have to ask yourself. Does this make our clothes look too young or does this make our clothes look wearable on an older person? And like Buscemi, I'm like, well, this just looks, this makes him look like, hello. Like, I mean, it's just, it just kind of makes it look like the, the meme of like, how do, how do you do fellow kids? Yes. Yes. Like, it's just like, you have to be careful with that. That, that is, that's a hundred percent what I get 
from from those campaigns yeah. is like these guys don't look don't look natural in this stuff and it looks like they are trying to dress like a 20 year old yeah and yeah that, and, and i think and, it backfires and i think it has think it, a total opposite effect for, for me it backfires a little bit and that's with any brand like that's with a lot of brands too like i mean a lot of brands have been trying to deploy the like use an older person to like i don't know an older icon to like really legitimize everything sure. and and if anything i think sometimes it just kind of backfires one thing i will say about kith I, they must be absolutely crushing it because uh, have you seen this new malibu store that they just opened it, dude it, the, everything they do is so to the nines um and i mean this is on top of like a a gorgeous Paris store and a big ass Tokyo shop. Uh -huh. Like, and, and this I think is maybe the most impressive one yet. Beautiful. I mean, this is millions of dollars, Beautiful. millions in M Malibu. It just like, makes you want to shop. Like stepping into a place like that. It's like, wait, I kind of want something off one of these. Good so racks. next time I, next time I find myself out California way, mm -hmm. I might have to, might have to get into this Malibu shop and yeah. maybe, maybe uh, treat myself. As we also see, have yeah, the, the, the question of what brands fallen off in your opinion lately. Whose heyday do you miss the most? Yeah, this is from JF LaRoque, 1991. What's a brand that's fallen off in your opinion? And whose heyday do you miss the most? I think I yeah, these are two different questions for me. Okay. The brand that I miss the most at this point is J. Crew. Okay. I miss them. I miss I miss being able to just be like, you know what? Here's my I need I need some staple. I'm just yeah. gonna go to J. Crew, get it, not I'm good. Yeah. Like it's been more inconsistent for me. The quality and the choices that they make on some of the clothes are just things that I'm like, oh, I don't. For example, they stopped putting like flat pockets on a lot of their pants, and they have like button flat po pockets okay. on the back of your pants, and I don't, I don't want that. Yeah, like that's a deal breaker for me when it comes to shopping for you know particular pairs of pants. And I just miss the, I miss like the the J Crew of old, and I do think it's gotten better, but I also just like I still miss it, and maybe it's just not in my shopping habits now. Uh, I. Let me say this. I, so I took a buddy of mine shopping this past weekend. He wanted to do like a little wardrobe refresh. Hell yes. Yeah. And he, I basically like took him to the domain, took him to Barton Creek and basically played stylist for a day. Mm -hmm. And well, wow. Did you have a blast? I had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a make a wish foundation while, thing for Barrett. While we did not cop anything from J crew, I did pop into the, to the J crew at, at Barton Creek and it was the best I had felt in in a J Crew in years. Okay, so they have a men's. They have a, Austin now has a men's J Crew at the mall. Yes. Okay, because they didn't for, used for, to have that. Right. For a while, that store was women's only, and you had to go out to the domain to see the men's. The men that store is temporarily closed right now with a bunch of renovation happening at the domain. But for a little while now, the Barton Creek location has had men's. Okay. And I walked through, and I think it it, it felt fresh in there. I think they had just put out a bunch of the new fall stuff. And uh, you might actually see something um, from them on my on my wish list this week in a, in a little bit. But like, I was walking around being like, like, kind of like, like nodding my head, saying like, okay, okay, feeling some stuff. Mm -hmm. so like, it, it was it was doing a little something okay. for me. Good so to know. I, I would absolutely. Want, I'm not like I, super I, I, down I, I, on them, I but I just miss. I miss. Well, them. No, I mean, and and they were like when they were peaking in 2015. That was that was some awesome stuff. Yeah, you know, they were crushing it so yeah, i would still I, buy I, stuff I from there take. like i'm I, I i totally agree with your take i'm just saying they they may be kind of they, they may be making a move up that ladder again mm -hmm. i still trust them overall like i i bought my tuxedo for my wedding from them and that was like i was like ready to do that yeah i was like i'm excited to get this tuxedo in and see if it fits yeah uh with with, with uh with the who's heyday do you miss the most uh i two two kind of came to mind one is like just ultra nostalgic and that's structure from okay. from the mid to late nineties. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, which there's a lot of structure happening in like current Abercrombie. Um, that that we also walked through Abercrombie, and yeah. some some of the sweaters that I'm seeing at Abercrombie for fall are like straight from structure 1997. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just fully in that. Yes. Brat. Yeah. Um, the other one that came to mind is is from the same era as peak j crew and that's band of outsiders oh interesting that's yeah. a good call that's a good call who were dominating that that like higher end j crew space with the lookbooks with michael Sarah and donald glover and like just just an absolute vibe um that they were putting out for for many many years now you're like jarring my you're like making me googling norse projects for the first time in months years <laughs> probably like i've it was public school is they still yeah, around pu public school and why that's another really good one like uh, I, I i i looked them up a couple years ago because i was like damn what what happened to them when 
I, I actually got a listener question about this uh, in my email, so I'll just bring it up now. But I got a, I got a question from uh, a guy who was asking me about, I had mentioned on an episode that I had worked at a high-end home goods store and it kind of like ruined me a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I started to like, my, my brain started to associate different prices with things that shouldn't be as expensive as the things. Not, no, I mean, not that they shouldn't be as expensive, but like my budget was not the budget of the people shopping at the store that I worked right, at. Right, but it, it like- It, it tainted it, me. It acclimat, you, you climat, acclimatized, basically. And like, I remember seeing- Acclimated, you like, acclimated. After public school won the CFDA and I like, I found this like jacket from them and I just fawned over it for years and I never got it. I'm not, I'll never get it now. But it was like right when they were just like blowing up, I was so excited and it's just over. One brand that kind of fell off that I miss a lot is Rowdy Gentleman. Oh yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, yeah, a brand, a brand that's fallen off. In your opinion, I mean, the obvious one, and we kind of touched on it. Yeah, we last week did it is, last week. Is, is a lo- is like there's some of that happening with AOD for sure. And like the public sentiment that you read on like like whatever yeah. community site you're on are are they very they actually think this more than I do. Yeah. Like the the criticisms that I read are much harsher than what I actually have, because I think that for a lot of things are great, but like, I I understand the gripes. I understand the gripes. Yeah. Um, I don't really like, I just, I don't even think things have fallen off. I just think that like the trends have changed so much that things just have a different connotation to them. Like, I feel like no offense to anybody. And I've done, I've done this for years, but like, you know, like Lululemon stuff now is almost like all birds kind of like vibe of like what the way people look at you if you wear something like that which isn't like like the worst thing in the world but like it just kind of is it just kind of goes with the like i like i've talked about before how i know i'm dressing dad Uh uh-huh uh-huh like if i'm dressing dad i'm dressing dad yeah but i know that if i go out dressing dad that i'm like no one's gonna look at me and be like wow he's killing it right now um yeah you're really going down the memory bank right now i mean how good were these though yeah right Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm mm-hmm this shit was so good. Yeah, uh, we, we've got the. If you're watching on YouTube, we've got the 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 2010 Band of Outsiders lookbook pulled up. Dave uh, Franco and Donald Dave Franco, Glover. Donald what a Glover, time. and Leslie Mann. Um, you just mentioned Lululemon and Aloe, though, which makes me think of an, of an even better answer for the fall off brand, which is Outdoor Voices. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the ultimate fall that's off. That's the ultimate fall off, especially in Austin. They, if, they, you, you, y'all. I just, I like, we talk about it a lot, but like, they were. You you could not get in line at any Austin store no. without seeing like three pairs of the tri the tri block. If you went to their store on a leggings. Saturday or Sunday, I mean, it was gonna be forty people deep in that that tiny ass store just like yeah. fighting over <laughs> stretchy fabrics, <laughs> color blocked leggings. Yeah. If you wanted a if you wanted a like they had their tiny store like their flagship store, and if you wanted a changing room, like you get, you had to wait forty five minutes to get one sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You're four Topo Chicos deep at that point. It's a good thing it was just, you know, they were spending $35,000 on the Mason Louis Marie candles because you were just, you were just in scent heaven. Now, okay, maybe they had, so I've thought about this. Maybe they had an investment stake in uh, the Maison, Maison Louis Marie candles <laughs> because they would buy them all. And then everyone that would leave the store would be like, it smelled so good in there. I need to buy that. And then uh-huh. suddenly everyone had the candles or the yeah. body, like the, the eau de parfum. Yeah. You ready for the next one? Let's do it. From cappuccinos and martinis. Very retail coded. Uh, very username there. Very feeling antsy. Should I move cities because I'm only young once and take a chance? Probably. Yeah. 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 Probably. Uh, my, I go ahead. I regret not doing it in my earlier Same. in my twenties. Like I lived in my hometown for so until I was about twenty seven, I think. And while I I always had a thirst to get out of my hometown, but I also liked it there. So it was kind of like I was being tugged in two different directions. Like the existential one. Like, do I want to spend the rest of my life here? Yeah, I kind of do. But do I do I get jealous of all my friends who are going out in these big cities every weekend and having like a blast. They can Uber to a concert. I have to drive four hours. It was, I waited a lot back in the day. And what really helped me out was when I think it must've been 2000, like 10. I did six months in San Francisco and it changed the way that I looked at everything. Like I look back at that six months in San Francisco as being such a formative time for me that it was I, it, it was more, imp- that six months was more important than probably like the two years following that six months, just because like it changed my view of things. It changed my outlook on the world. It changed my motivation. It changed a lot. And so like just getting out for six months helped me in the long term more than I can even like say. Yeah. Yeah. This is something that I, that I didn't do. And like, I, I- it's hard to say that I necessarily like regret not doing it, but that is the best way to put it. <laughs> yeah. It's it's different than like a than like a 
you know, a heart wrenching regret, mm -hmm. but I, and, and, you know, I had an awesome time in Austin from the ages of like 22 to 25, but when I was 25 and kind of like uh, trying to find myself for, for lack of a better phrase, I, I should have moved. I should have gone somewhere. Yeah. I should have done like that. That's when you, that is like you said, that's when you can take a chance. And honestly, it doesn't have to be 25. You can be 30 or even 35, depending on your, you yeah. know, your, your, your life situation, but it's easiest to do it when you're young because you, you, th there's always like, look, if you get up and you move to Chicago or you move to New York or you move to Austin and it doesn't work, you get, you go back, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's, it's not like, Whereas, you know, when you're young too, you're also more thrifty. Like you, right, you yes. can, you can get by with less. You can do less. Like, I mean, I, I got to the point where I was, I was broke as a joke in San Francisco at one point, just cause it's such an expensive city. I wasn't yeah. making that much money. It was what it was, but like, I mean, I was legitimately for dinner some nights, like going to the, the restaurant, you know, two blocks down and getting a side of mashed potatoes from the hot bar and eating it for a dollar <laughs> 50 for dinner. Like it was dark times, but like now I look back on it and I'm like, man, like I was so excited to get like a paycheck and go like do something in San Francisco yeah. that day. And like, now I go back and visit all the time and I get to go to my old spots and do it all. And like, it's just, yeah, it's, it, I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I did it. Um, and when I moved down to Austin, it was, it was a big leap of faith, Yeah, but like, how, how old were you when you moved to Austin? 27. Yeah. I guess it was nine years ago. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you, you kind of did this. Yeah. That was, that was a big jump. How about, how about you, Randy? What, how old were you when you, when you moved, when you moved to Austin and did you feel like this was, were you nervous to do so? Did you feel like you were taking a chance? I, I was definitely taking a, a big chance, but there was so much stuff that lined up and I was yeah. like, all right, if I don't take this now, I'm never going to do it. And like, there's a there's a version of me in an alternate universe that never took the chance and like I feel so bad for that person like <laughs> yeah like, I think I, the same I thing I'm so happy that I moved here and tried it out and like like you said if, if it didn't work out I could I've always gone back like, right yeah. yeah and, and I'd be was, lying if I said I didn't have times where I was like I'm just gonna move back to Michigan like I had I've I've had that realization or not realization I probably had that thought like majorly at like three different points in my life in Austin over the last nine years. But now I'm at a point where I'm like, oh no, like I can't really imagine not living in a city that has everything at your fingertips. Like I, I need to be here. I like being here. I like yeah. being in a city like this. Yeah. yeah, I think I moved. I was 24, 25. Scary um, shit. But like, I learned like just the what you learn just by moving somewhere new is crazy. Just like the way that it opens you up. The the way that you can like when I started realizing like, oh, I can just go to this concert alone downtown. Not having have to think about anything. Like it used to be like, all right, now I got to rile up my friends to go to this concert. That's a couple hours away. We all got to get in the car together. We're going to mm -hmm. figure out where to sleep, where, whatever. And like, I started being like, holy shit, I can actually stroke my interests so much better now than I could before. And I never even thought about things from that angle. Like just f moving somewhere that had what I liked just changed everything for me in such a big way. Yeah. So cappuccinos and martinis. Yes, you should do this. I also want to know where Take a leap. I want to know where cappuccinos and martinis is moving from and, and what and their short about, list of yeah, is yes. of moving to. Yeah, write back to us and tell us uh tell tell us your tell us more about your sitch and and where you're thinking about going. Yes. Uh how about some home questions? Yes. Will. Let's right. do it. Uh you want to start with bar or vinyl? Uh let's do bar. Okay. From Adam Wajnar, what's the ideal setup for a bar cabinet or cart? Any must-haves? What would you splurge on? Okay. I think, I, can I name a couple flexes? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, I used to love the accessories of the home store that I worked in. It's called Huzzah, by the way. H-U-Z-Z-A. It's in Harbor Springs, Michigan. Still um, going? Still going. Okay. Oh, yeah. They've been family owned for, I guess it's, we did the 30th anniversary when I was there. So they're, they're definitely over 40 years now. Um, my friend Tobin's the women's, or she's the buyer for a lot of the stuff in there. Um, I, I love everyone there. It's It was a it was fun time and they got a lot of cool stuff. Like, the taste level on the buying team is wild. Uh, but well, my favorite thing to go through and my favorite thing to receive, my favorite thing to do everything was like just the home accessories. And so many of those were bar accessories. Uh, one flex you can have on a bar cart is having a very nice wine key. Okay. Like uh, there is a company called, let me make sure I'm doing Fontenelle Pateau is a company that does a lot of knives and they do a lot of wine keys and things like that. It's a French company spelled F-O-N-T-E-N-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And then the next word is Pateau, P-A-T-A-U-D. 
probably mispronouncing it, but like <laughs> they they have very very cool products that uh, just look really nice. They're timeless. They're insanely high quality, and the pricing on them, while it is somewhat high, I do think that it's worth it if you're doing like a gift for somebody. Sally knew that I really liked a wine key from them, and she got it for me for uh, Christmas this year, this past year. I think it's like two hundred dollars. And it seems a little ridiculous, but like I know that I'm going to have this wine key sitting in the same spot on my bar as long as I live where I am, and it's always going to be in my life. And say the brand one more time. Fontenelle Pateau. Fontenelle Pateau. Yes. Okay. All right. The other thing that I think is a huge flex for people, um, and this is a very high-end flex, and I think you can easily do this uh, less high-end, but your shaker for cocktails. And I know, know, don't shake your martinis, whatever. I don't care. Do whatever you want as long as you, you like your cocktail. But if you just have the metal shaker, that's fine. That's what I have at my place right now. What I really want is like a glass or crystal shaker with a metal top. Okay. I think it I think it elevates your bar cart to the point where, well, one, you can't have this when you have kids because if they knock this over, it's going to shatter. But I just think that having the glass shaker uh, is so much more, uh, I don't want to say tasteful, but it's just more high-end looking than having the metal shaker. Yeah, so right here. Like you can get one for $50 right now from uh, where? What are you on? This is uh, Pottery Barn. Pot- Pottery Barn, I think. Yeah. On, on sale for 34 Exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Let me let me, let me me add this because one of my notes here for Bar Cart, and this is actually, I'm calling myself out here because the, the cocktail shaker that I use has a top very similar to this one. Mm-hmm. It's the it's It's got the graded opening and then the little cap that goes on top. Yeah. It's fine. It works okay. It's good for shaking the cocktail. But you need you need a strainer. You need you a little metal strainer. That like I don't have one, and I make I and and I end up making a mess most of the times that I make a make the a utility because- of the metal. So I, I don't even remember where I got my metal one from, but it has the larger bottom cup, the larger top cup that you put in, and then it also has a strainer, uh, a stirrer, uh, and then a double sided jigger with a ounce and a half shot and an ounce shot. And it's all you need. I mean, it's 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 such an easy way to make a cocktail. Uh, but if you're trying to flex, I think going with the the glass bottom is the move. Yeah, and but I do think you should have you do you, you do just, need a strainer in your life. Exactly. You just you also need a strainer sitting there because if you do, you know, you 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 put ice in the the shaker and then you stir, you shake, and and then you need to strain the drinks and trying to keep the lid on with but but and get it and then pour it all out, but get the you know it just. It, it's not. It's not ideal. Yeah, you, you yeah. Get the strength. We'll we'll realize that at sauces party. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually. So usually I do. Usually I do hold the. Um. I I'm used to straining stuff. Or I'm used to using the strainer. And yeah, at the party that I did with Randy, where I dumped it all over, didn't even think about it, and just tipped it over and poured it out the top, and suddenly I was in down bad. Uh, one of my favorite things to receive at the store was from a place called uh, William Yord. They're a English crystal company, and they had these giant martini shakers that were probably, I don't, I, I could see them being over a thousand dollars. But it was just like holding them. It was like, oh man, you're balling out if you're making martinis out of this thing. Yeah, the size of a shaker is also important. And like the bigger the shaker, the happier you're going to be. Yeah. I struggled to make four somewhat like essentially four Mexican martinis the other night in one sh- in my shaker and it kind of bugged me that I couldn't make four martinis in one shaker. I wanted something a little bigger, but I also think that maybe I should should make make maybe batches of two. Where do you stand on cart versus cabinet? I don't love liquor being publicly on display in my place just because I like it to look more minimalistic and I think that a lot a bunch of bottles. I don't think that if you have like nice liquor that it gives like college kid at, at this point, but I do I do like having it out of the way. I don't like having a bar cart and at with two kids in the mix, there's no way I could even justify having a bar cart uh, right now. I, I'm I, I did not know which way you were gonna go on that, but I'm I'm totally with you. I think that the the bar cart is like a little too mid century modern. It it's it gives like costume madman a little bit too much i, I don't if you use if your you bar cart I, if, just use it but every pe- everyone's bar cart that i end up looking at never moves it never changes well, the, and they all have the same stuff on there the entire time the other thing i was gonna say is we, yeah that and which means it gets dusty you have to dust a bar cart constantly with yeah. all the bottles sitting it so with a cabinet it's a little bit easier i think that is a nice place to splurge by the way like this is one from cb2 um it you know it's 500 that is bucks, nice but it's got the uh, this like really nice reeded front, and yeah, you can kind of put things away. You can keep glasses or coupes in there, and they w- and like I'm saying, or wine glasses, and they won't get dusty. Um, uh, great to stash all the little trinkets and jiggers and shakers and yeah. all that type of stuff. And you can still have some stuff sitting on top of it if you if if you so choose for a little display. 
Um, but yeah, I'm definitely cabinet over cart these days. I agree. That's a this is a really good looking option. Um, like, like I said, cart's fine, especially if you use it, especially if you, if you, if you keep it well curated and all that, like it can look cool too, but I just think cabinets a little bit more, you get a little bit more mileage, a little bit more, something uh, I do to offset this. I want to make people feel like they can drink whatever the hell they want at my place. Because if you, if you're coming over at this point, I drink so little at my place alone that I want you to drink. I want you to finish a bottle at my place. (laughs) Like I want, I want you to get rid of these things. And so um, I will like set up a little mini bar for people. Like if I know we're having a couple people over or, or whatever, I will just set up a bar at some part of our place and just like be like, hey, have whatever you want over here. Just get ha- like, get after it, have at it, throw, uh, no, just throw everything uh, away. Another thing that I will suggest and, and will, you know, with, with all your talk of, uh, of crisp whites this summer, uh, I hope you have one of these, but I've gotten a lot of use out of a marble wine cooler. I need one. Yeah. I it, need one. This is re- this is really nice. Like if you let's say you have a bottle of let, let's say you don't own a wine fridge, yeah. right? So you can't keep it at like a perfect fifty two degrees or mm-hmm. whatever. You have it in the fridge. It's maybe slightly too cold. You pop it out. You pour a couple glasses, and then you drop it in here, and it's like it's going to be the perfect temperature in ten minutes. And I, I also th- have very much enjoyed doing things around our place lately that give restaurant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the little tap lights like just like l- votive stuff like that like i almost feel like the i'm going out less now so i am doing things at home that make me feel like i'm at a restaurant sometimes and this would be something that i would like to do that would make me feel like i'm at a restaurant in a great way now i'm looking at 468 dollar cocktail shakers that are pewter just like <laughs> chilling here which is not how i should be spending my time in life do you want to talk uh quick on the vinyl Let's go vinyl. Okay, we have it. Uh, it says, a cost-friendly approach for someone new who wants a decent vinyl setup. This was a big stressor for me when I first started shopping for vinyl stuff. Uh, I spent a lot of time looking. I didn't. I wasn't trying to do it uh, cheap necessarily, like I was, or cost-friendly. I was kind of telling myself, like, Will, get something nice So because if you fall in love with this, you're, n- you're going to be annoyed if you have to upgrade immediately or if you want to upgrade immediately. What I ended up finding was a very nice, like a nice company that makes pretty good uh, or well priced uh, table t- or turntables called U Turn, and I very much enjoyed my U Turn. It's when you're looking for something, you want to make sure that uh, there are a few. Like you kind of need to know your needs going into it. the The number one thing for quality is going to be the needle, and so needles can go anywhere from you know cheap to five hundred dollars. Uh, U-Turn allows you to customize really everything. So you can get a turntable from them for like $250, I think, and you can customize whatever. Uh, the more that you customize it, the obviously the more the price will go up. But I ended up going full U-Turn for everything because I just wanted, if I needed a customer service stuff, I could do that. I'm not very good with sound and tech. So I just wanted everything to be very straightforward. And so I got everything from them. I think I got a basic turntable um, with a preamp installed into it. And then I did not upgrade any of the needle or anything. And I bought the speakers from them too. And I just kind of wanted nice speakers anyway, just in, for the future. And so it wasn't necessarily cost friendly because I think I still spent like almost $800 on everything. Uh, but it did kind of m- make me understand that like, you don't need to spend that much if you don't want to. There where, are where, so many different ways to go about it. Where's the bulk of that cost coming from? Is it the speakers? The speakers were quite expensive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I also knew that the speakers weren't going to just be something that I used for the record player. Right. The speakers were also going to be, I wanted them for if I needed to set something up at the house for the boys, or if I was having people over, I could use them. Um, in the future, I could use them as a part of surround sound for like a television or something. I had never owned nice speakers, and mainly because we had a Sonos in our old apartment, so I never needed nice speakers. Uh, but now that I don't have that, I, I actually needed to invest in it. Can you, do you know, will a U-turn like hook up to like a Sonos system or something like that? You can hook up pretty much everything to whatever your needs are. Okay. It might take like, so I had to buy a separate uh, piece to hook up to it that would allow me to listen to my records on headphones. Mm-hmm. I didn't mm-hmm. want to wake the boys up by listening to some records late night. So I thought it'd be a good investment for the times that I wanted to scratch the itch. So you have to buy those kind of things. But something that I've been doing recently that is much more cost friendly is that we have a record store in town who posts deals all the time on just full setups. It'll say like, here's the the turntable and then here are the speakers. You can get everything for this price. And like, 
Randy just went and bought one for me the other day because I couldn't leave the house. I was on dad duty. Yeah. And it was $300 and I'm having an absolute blast with this. And that was the whole thing? Whole thing. Speakers and everything? Yep. $300 total. And just so the went most, and picked it up. So the most cost effective way then is probably going to be used. Yeah, you, uh, I would say yeah, used. And then can, you, can you can always upgrade a, those things too. Like yeah, you can yeah. find things online. You can go online and do that stuff. Like uh, the one thing I'll say is that if you if you're looking for a turntable, the one just the one thing you shouldn't do is buy a Crossley. Okay. That it's that's essentially just like a gift. Like that's good for like a kid. It's good for whatever. But if you're actually trying to get quality uh out of it and and have it sound good just don't get a crossly because it is that is much more gifty and any record store will tell you the same thing yeah. like i think the record store that i go to the most waterloo even has a sign that says like we don't endorse crossly for our <laughs> records like i don't think it's like a i don't think it's necessarily a slight it's Fuck you, more crossly. just like if your kid wants a record player, buy him this one yeah, for whatever yeah. the price is and move on from but, it. But don't put your vintage Grateful Dead exactly 1972 like, vinyl. Yeah, on but that thing. I will also clarify for this uh, this listener that when it comes to vinyl, there is no cost friendly way of doing it. You're you're going to fall in the hole, and eventually you're going to spend a lot of money without even realizing it. Do you, on or, for these U turns for these orbits. Yeah. What 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 are you getting for the Orbit Plus or the Orbit Special? Discover more detail with an upgraded platter and cartridge. What does that what does that even mean? The cartridge is the needle. Okay. So the, like the the cartridge is going to be the the thing at the end. And yeah. so like part of the reason I did this was because I always knew that if I bought something that was more cost friendly on here, I could upgrade through U-turn and do it. And okay. I have made modif I've made modifications to my table myself or my turntable myself. But they've mostly just been maintenance kind of things, like, oh, I've had to replace this part or do whatever. But their customer service has been great. Um this isn't the only way to go, but this is just where I found myself looking for a slightly higher end version that wasn't going to and, like and this bend was, me over backwards. Right, and this was recommended to us by a lot of people when, you, of people. when you were starting your, exactly. your, your vinyl journey. Exactly, yeah. and, so I, and this, I get why people do it. The, the downsides for these is that they're not like automatic. So, you know, when you start the record, you're the one taking off the needle. So if you get distracted, you're, mm, mm, mm. you'll find it running on the, the record for a little bit. Yeah. 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 They look nice. My the one I have is I just went on Amazon. I did like a bunch of research and this one, like a lot of like tech magazines recommend for beginners, the uh, audio technica. Yep. Yep. And, like, that's a big one. And this I got the one that's 150 off of Amazon. And this one, like, is just a turntable that just puts in the speakers. Like you get a kind of upgraded one that does Bluetooth, but like What's the point of doing a Bluetooth to a speaker? Like you could Bluetooth it to a speaker, but it's like, uh, I I think it's better to just get that. And then I got a pair of like Edifier uh, speakers that are, I think are like $99, mm -hmm. but I got them refurbished and they're like set, like $80. So like all in all, like I spent probably less than $300 on my setup. I got a stand go. too. And but you've probably already good, spent yeah. more on records since you got it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. But yeah. Uh, on these audio technicas, bo bonus. I'm pretty sure that you can you can just start scratching. Oh yeah, just two, start. You know, just, just start doing it. Yeah, I've yeah. been listening to a lot of Beastie Boys lately, so I'm I'm just uh, Mixmaster Mike's looming hard in my brain. I've also just been wanting to party a lot lately for some reason because I've been listening to the Beastie Boys. Well, uh, we'll get Randy set up and we'll we'll drop that on the digest. <laughs> drop that on the digest as well. Can we hear from our friends over at Diplomatico? Of course. Let's talk about daiquiris for a second. Are we overlooking the daiquiri when it comes to uh, cocktail of the summer? Might be. Feels like they've gotten a bad rap as being too sweet or too fruity or too frozen, but we're here to open our minds back up again. There's room for the daiquiri to be as elegant as it is simple. Three ingredients, rum, lime juice, and simple syrup. You know how we're making ours? With Diplomatico rum. I had the absolute pleasure of mixing up some of these, uh, not just last week, but earlier this week as well. And when you think about it, the daiquiri is kind of a classic cocktail that should be getting more play this summer. I don't know if it's because it was turned into a meme from uh, Wedding Crashers in the 2000s or if we're just, uh, just here to bring it back into consideration. From lake days to patio nights, we need to be whipping up daiquiris more. I will say, this is one of the easiest drinks to whip up. It just takes a little, a little Diplomatico, some lime juice, and some simple syrup. Toss that thing in your shaker on your bar cart and you're off to the races Go check out Diplomatico Rum. Please drink responsibly. Diplomatico Rum is 47% alcohol by volume, imported by Brown Foreman in Louisville, Kentucky. Let's talk game day. College football. Can't get here soon enough. Shouts to Dan. Register. Shouts to Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Always a common question. We always. always we always get game day questions. Always a common question. Um, so we have two here. Game day came up last week on last week's episode. Did it? Oh, I well, said something like, to the effect of like, I get, I get stressed about dressing for game yeah, day right, because right. I feel yeah, yeah, pressure yeah. to yes. dress like I'm yes. going golfing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Especially and, in Texas. That's right. So we, now from, you're wearing a wheelchair rugby Texas that's yep. thing, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that boy McCoy said game day fit Rex 2024 are polos overrated. And then Brooks Tracy asked with college football season coming up, what is your ideal tailgate and what is your fit? <sighs> Polos aren't overrated, but sometimes they're a necessary evil. Okay. I, I popped into the to the co-op here in Austin. It's like our big UT, you know, UT shop, uh, right, right, right by campus. Um, and I was looking around and I I had I had this, I had this feeling. I was looking at the new Nike dry fit polos, and it's like, oh, I could, I could use a new one of these. But then I, I totally understand this idea that, like, okay. This is what everybody has, mm-hmm. you know. This is everybody's buying this. You're going to tuck it into some khaki shorts. You're going to pair it with your on running sneakers. Mm-hmm. Like I like, and I, I'm so torn on that because wh- the the first thing is it's a really good game day fit. It's it is. Pr- it's practical. It is. It's dry fit. It breathes. Your feet stay comfortable. I'm not you, roasting like, someone else for the fit. I roast myself <laughs> for being like I'm dressed exactly like that person. Like so, I'm roasting myself for not having any flavor. Yeah. So so I, yeah. Sometimes I just. I just do that because that's because it's easy and it looks it looks all right and like it's and it's practical but and it's very hot here for for half of our games at you know at the bare minimum. It's so the, well, here we're here you're you're thirty in, in at least in September maybe early October like you are dressing for the elements more than you're dressing for the game. Yeah, it's just that you happen to have stuff that is made for both. Yeah, but but um but you you can you know lo- like. My ideal football weather is like in the fifties. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's a photo on my Instagram. If you scroll back, to go a few photos uh, where this this happened for one of our games this past fall, and I went like boots, jeans with like this like <sighs> dude, it killed me. This, I couldn't this, go to that game. this amazing like Todd Snyder burn orange short coat that I had picked up. So like ruined me. That, that's that is obviously ideal. Is when the weather is nice enough that you can actually get a fit off. Yeah. When it when when it's not when it's a warm weather football game, it's like. I'm either wearing a t-shirt to like try to mix it up a little bit or yeah, I'm just going with the generic ass polo and that's okay too. Yeah. Big 10 tailgate weather for me. Like I just miss it. I, I loved being in a crew neck sweatshirt, pair of slacks, sneakers, tables, yeah. tables on the lawn. Yeah. My, my, I miss I, it. My ideal tailgate honestly doesn't, it's hard to find at UT games anymore too. It's all been so like corporatized. Um, at, at all of the tailgate spots are like, are like essentially owned or licensed by, tailgate guys and or, set or up whoever them, and they're, so it's and they're all like set the up by them so it's all it all feels very very generic and i just don't know anybody like doing the old school tailgates my parents and i used to back uh back in that heyday that i was talking about where i stayed in austin and, and never left um but that's where we would do you know like tents in a parking lot had the grill out had the little oh, yeah. mini coleman grill out doing like burgers like super strong cocktails cooler full of beers like everybody came through it, it like we we would rent a speaker. We would put on a play like pl- uh, you know good jams and playlists. But that like basically the, what you think of when you think of like a parking lot tailgate thrown by your friends or family like that's the ideal tailgate. Yeah. Why why the, the, it doesn't need to get no. m- more difficult than that. Yeah. I just want cool. I want it as simple as humanly possible. Maybe like w- one type of like lawn game on yeah. the, on the side. Oh yeah, for sure. You for know? sure. Bags. Honestly, give me give me two ski poles in the ground and a frisbee. That I was just what is that called? I love that game. I don't even know the, what we call we it. We call it beers be. Yeah, that's my. It's, it's by far my favorite game too. I'm so good at if it. If that's being played, everyone's having a good time. <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah. it's just the perfect thing. And you know that like if if it's ski poles are in the ground, you know that like you're you're with the right crew. The, yeah, damn, you're hanging out. That that sounds nice. Um, la- one one more thing I'll add. I, I love what you did too. I love and I I I do find myself hunting on eBay for like something cool and vintage to kind of. To yeah, to, I want to wear vintage stuff. You, to I want to find something unique. I want to find like the vintage item that I like love wearing to hot weather games and then have one for cold weather games too. Yeah. My ideal fit for a, a football game is a, truly a crew neck sweatshirt. Crew, crew neck sweatshirt. I just want to be wearing a team yeah. sweatshirt, toss a hat on. Yeah. Have a koozie. Kind of like, it. like, like it, it's the friends Thanksgiving football game vibe. Yeah. But like maybe a little bit less sweat pantsy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah, crew, uh, yeah, a crew neck, maybe something classic just, from like champion or something like that. Oh, yeah. Big school letters across the chest. Maybe an emblem. Doesn't matter. That's a vibe too. Yep. Yep. 
Ready for some lightning round Let's stuff? do lightning round. Okay. This one, I, I, I can take this one. This is from Tr True Jomi. Any tips pr for preventing wear and tear in the crotch area of jeans? Um, I got nothing. Yeah. This 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 is this typically happens. This is a big issue with raw denim. Okay. And the, the reason that this will, the you, the crotch blowout thing. The reason this happens is because you're not washing the jeans. Oh. Yeah. And okay. it's it's tough. You, you, it's a double edged sword because you want to get your fades. You want to you 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 want to break in the jeans. The whole thing. You're like uh, you don't you wear them 300 times before you wash them. But the the dirt and the sweat break down the fibers. Okay. And so what do you do? So you I mean unfortunately you just you got to wash them more. You got to the you know, you got to, you, it, it, you got to strike the right balance when they are dirty, wash them cold. soap cold, or cold wash, hang to dry. Have um, you seen the Tumblr photo of uh, a guy with some Japanese denim on the inside? He just has written in permanent marker on the pocket the days that they've been washed. Yeah. 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 It's just yeah. like, yeah, you've washed these three times, which <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, if you're still having an issue with this, you might have to like get some jeans with one or 2% stretch instead of hundo P cotton. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I guess I've never have to, I never have dealt with this. And then, on, and then beyond that, like if you're buying quality jeans and this is still happening after following all of those directions, like, I don't know, maybe a new brand, different size or just stop doing so many lunges in yeah, your jeans. Try a different you cut. Yeah. Get a less athletic cut, my man. Next one I think is, uh, it's for you. Italy in September. Do I buy new clothes in the U.S. or save money for shopping there? Uh, I, I like the idea of shopping in Europe, but like it's outrageously expensive. It just feels it's just tough. Yeah. Uh, I also don't like returning with more stuff than I went on a trip with some of the time. Okay. So I I usually don't do that much shopping on trips unless it's like. A place that has great shopping, which Italy does qualify for this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The stuff that I shop for is not stuff that I personally would need in, to go to Italy for. The one thing that I do do is I I will be hitting the duty-free shop hard as hell. I like to stop at the duty-free shop. <laughs> like, what, what are you getting at duty-free? Aqua de Parma. Okay. Like, it's just so much. It's such a better price. It feels good buying it on vacation so you can use it on vacation as you're going, going to your hotel and stuff like that. But the last time I went through the duty-free in Italy, I saw that they had Aqua de Parma, which is a rarity when it comes to duty-free stuff. And so I was like, I'm going to go check that, check this out. Suddenly, I just came up with like a pile. <laughs> and I'm just getting through that pile. Like two years later, I've used most of the stuff. I Honestly, I need to use some of it more to like justify yeah. getting more. But that's like one thing that I can't wait to go do because I know that it's the best price I'm going to get it for. I'm getting an Italian product from a place in Italy. It doesn't feel super sexy to get it from a duty-free store. Yeah. But it still feels pretty damn good. Okay. Yeah. Um, Man, I... <sighs> I cannot help myself. I have to. We know that. We to, know I that. I have to shop before vacations because, and like as badly as I, there's always something. Yeah. That, you know, I had to, this. To, I, I had to get the. I had to get. These, there you go. You know? I was wondering if these were going to come out. I only had to get them. Almost hit the hour mark before we got to see the fisherman um, sandals. Yeah. Like like so. I, you know, I want to tell you to hedge. I want to tell you to be really really choosy about the things that you that you that you need, that you want in an Instagram photo, the, the, the vibe that you want to curate for yourself there. Like if you need a couple of things, like get them before you go. But like ideally you're able to do a little bit of both, right? Yeah. Especially like like Italy, Italy especially, there is great shopping in Italy. Oh, and yeah. like if you're going to Milan, like like you, you got to save a little bit of your cash. It's also cool if you're going to buy something, like if you're going to get like a statement handbag for the first time or yeah. something, getting it from the store in Italy is such a cool thing to remember that you did instead of buying it online. Well, and so this is this is more. And I I think this probably applies to Italy too because it, it's in it's in euros. But I, I I or they that's the 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 currency is euros. But like I usually hear about this with people going to Paris because a lot of the the, the houses are are French ateliers or whatever. But like it, if you go and you shop in Paris at Saint Laurent or Goyard or wherever, like the 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 price is much better. Oh okay yeah. So I. I it, I would also, if you are thinking about some like a luxury good. Yeah. Oh yeah. If it's, I think if it's luxury, you should just buy it over there then, and have, then, have an experience. Then do a little bit of research because there's a really good chance that you will get a huh. better price over there. And then depend. It, sometimes you have to do a little bit of work for this, but you should get the VAT back. That's the value added tax that that uh, that that Europe puts puts on products. But as as a non -U EU resident, you should be able to get that back. Okay. Sometimes it's as easy as just having your passport with you. By the way, Randy, you should know this too. Bring um, 
passport with you in Japan because they will take they they if you have it if you can show you're not a Japanese resident they take the tax off. Oh, you can say like ten to fifteen percent. I did not know that. You yeah. know, I actually do have my passport with me right now, so wow. I'm going to make some copies on that printer. Uh, so 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 that's that's a thing to consider for international shopping as well is that you can, especially like like. Again, like in France, stuff that's made in France, definitely a better price. In Italy, stuff that's made in Italy okay. definitely will be a better price because you're not – because those are all – just like made in the U.S. stuff is really expensive if you're buying it in the U.K. because of the uh, – because of their import fees. There's a lot of that happening um, you know, in, in, in the U.S. as well. So – yeah, uh, it's a. I'm cheating and hedging by saying try to do a little bit of both, but that's just because I understand the 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 desire for both of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Uh, have you? Yeah, have you? Did you just move this one up? The Cologne recommendation? No, no. I was now? just. I wanted to look up the person that submitted it so that I could know if we were catering uh, to a more masculine scent or a more feminine uh -huh, scent, uh -huh. and I figured out that we are going more masculine. Masculine, yeah. From I'm a better window Cologne recommendations, uh, and then there's also some. There's a second part of this question which I'm not really going to be able to answer, which is like eau de toilette versus ed parfum versus classic parfum. I think one is more concentrated than the yes. other. I think that's all it is, uh, yeah. concentration. I, an eau de toilette, I believe, is the the lightest of yes. the sprays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. typically you're that means you're getting like the less like the least amount of like oils mm -hmm. at, to which speaks to your concentration thing. Yeah. So, you know, the parfums, the the not to, you know, it's kind of like the parfums are kind of like the quote unquote real thing yeah. in a way. And they will definitely be more expensive. And you definitely don't need to smell that strong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I'm going to sound a little douchey. Okay. I mean, you already gave us your right. Well, I, so I got a DM recently uh, from a company that was saying like, hey, we'd love to send you some stuff. And usually when I get DMs like that, I just respond immediately like, sure, let's see, let's see what you got. And this one was from YSL. Okay. And I was like, what, what's YSL about to send me? And what they sent me, I was not bummed about, but it, I, I, it, it, it didn't exactly cater to me. And they sent a bunch of uh, perfumes. And so Sally's eyes obviously lit up when this package arrived. I mean, it's a total, I think it's a total like influencer marketing play. Like, you know, send them free stuff and they'll use it and put it on the story, whatever. Okay. And I have now gone through all these and started like smelling them. And Sally's kept a few... Um, but there was one that really struck me as being like more masculine. And when I looked it up, sure enough, it's like the, the kind of the men's version. But it's YSL, uh, myself, not, there's no E in the word myself, M Y S L F, and it's an eau de parfum. It is very classic, very good, $125 for their largest size. And so, like, I honestly, for most guys out there, I would recommend not buying the largest size and just getting a small one. And oh, if yeah. you wear it all the time, then like call it good and, get a bigger one but like i don't think most guys finish their bottles of cologne and Correct. so i think it is worth buying the smaller one and going and seeing what you like the other one that i like a lot is aqua de parma's bergamot de calabria it is a uh, very limey it's a little more limey citrusy but it's so fresh and summer smelling whereas a lot of other scents that i smell i associate them with like colder weather for some reason whereas this is extremely summery and so if you just type in aqua de parma uh, mediterranean line it's like these blue bottles they have all these different <laughs> scents that are very cool it's a little more expensive than the ysl will run you um but a hack here is using their body cream which is cheaper than the actual spray the body cream is so fragrant that you can literally just use that and people would smell it on you like that. And it, it it's a very pleasing scent. It's not overwhelming. It's very nice. Good balance to it. Highly recommend uh, those two right now for what I'm kind of doing. Okay. Uh, so I will add that I, I've, I've talked over the last several months about um, my interest in the Le Labo fragrances. Yeah. Um, right now, I think through the end of the month, they're, they, they're doing like their city editions mm -hmm. and you can get the, you can get a discovery set, which has a little bottle of, of like five of them right now for like 60 or $70. It's great. So really good deal. Um, I also love, uh, uh, the, the matcha from Le Labo and then another 13 are the two that I've been getting the samples yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. Love both of those. They have so many good fragrances. Uh, if you, ha if, if you don't have a Le Labo shop, just pop into a Nordstrom because of what I'm about to say next, where you can probably check out both of these. I, so here's what I'll say. I, I'd been messing with the Leila bows and this, the samples. This past weekend, 
I got I I busted out one of my bottles. I have two Tom Ford private blends, Neroli Portofino, which we talked about because that's like my vacation scent, mm-hmm. and then Costa Azura, which may have been discontinued. But I put on the Costa Azura for a long time, and like within ten minutes, um, I was complimented by my wife that I smelled really good. There you go. And the Layla, the I will say that about the Layla, the Layla Bow does not have what we call quote unquote throw the okay. way the the way that. Uh, the Tom Ford private blends seem to that checks out. Yeah, I, 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 I agree, but, uh, that's what I was going to say is, is you won't find the, the, the city edition discovery set stuff at Nordstrom. But if you, if you do have a Nordstrom, you should be able to, to, to go sample or test or at least smell most of the Tom Ford private blends and most of the Leila Beau fragrances. Mm-hmm. And those are kind of my two go-tos. People talk about uh, Com de Garcon scents all day long. Yeah, like like the Canoe Club Discord is huge on on uh, on a bunch of the different Com de Garcons. I've never tried any of them, so I I can't say. I mean, my my experience is very limited to the things that I've sold and the very few yeah. things that I've used myself. Yeah, um, I've got a quick answer for uh, for for Andrew Halsey's question. Where can I find a good oversized quarter zip? Um, check out the homie uniform LA. Perfect. He's got the heavyweight studio half zip. He's even got some really good colors like this Cypress green on sale right now. Uh, I have a black one that this is literally the perfect oversized quarter zip. It is. It is. I'm glad you went with this material. Like it's, it's it's just great. This is, it's, it's super heavyweight. It's so cozy. Um, I, I, I really like, I can't say enough good things about this. If it didn't take up so much space, because of its bulkiness and its weight in my drawers, I would definitely have like another one. But I gotta, you it's know, it's nice. It's really nice. Um, I don't know if he, he uh, the Pat, the the guy that runs this brand and started it and creative director, all that. I don't know if he has more colors cooking of this for for fall or not. But I mean, go right, go right now when you can. Still grab, good colors. Grab some on sale. Yeah. Um, but this is like easy answer for what for for exactly an oversized quarter zip. Yeah. 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 Don't. Yeah. That's easy. What's I, I don't have any better alternatives. Uh, backwards hat on grown uh, men. Yes, yes, Edgy yes. or infantile? How, how grown is grown? Are you familiar with the, the like this being kind of like a meme that like women love dudes in a backwards hat? Oh, uh, my wife has gone on record saying that she doesn't think that I'm any hotter than when I have a backwards hat on. <laughs> okay. So I know that I can so, turn an argument around just yeah. by going in my closet, grabbing a hat and wearing a backwards hat around the house. Like Damn, I know that this, I can. I, I, I'm not. I'm not lucky enough to 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 have somebody that feels this. Here's way. Here's the difference between you and I. Yeah, you're a hat guy. You wear hats a lot. Okay. I never wear a hat. So if I'm wearing a backwards hat, it's like, oh, there's a different version of him out right now. Yeah. What's All this right. guy doing? But like, I look at backwards hats. I, like I, I I look at them as being very situational. Like if you're wearing a backwards hat to run some errands and go grab coffee in the morning, like yeah, turn that thing around. Yeah. Like you're yeah, sporty yeah. right now. You're in sport mode. But like. If you're at a baseball game and you're just rocking the backwards hat the entire time, it's like, well, like, but like, how old is too old, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have an answer for that. You and I are grown ass men, and I think we can each pull off backwards hats. Yeah, but like, our dad's in a backwards hat. Yeah, there's so there's a really old, there's like a <laughs> 75 year old man who got a hole in one recently when at the same course that I was playing at, and he he turned his hat around while buying everyone their their beer in yeah. the clubhouse. And like he walked around the entire time with his hat backwards. And it was like, this guy looks like such an old man with a backwards hat on. <laughs> like there's nothing natural about this backwards hat, but he just got a hole in one and no one's going to tell him that he looks wild. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, it's, it's, uh, I don't know the age, but I, but it's kind of one of those things where you just, you, you know it when you feel it, yeah. you know it when you see it. Yes. I, I, it's just like a common sense thing, but yeah. So I it would, almost uh, has to be like, like a, for me, it almost has to be like a, uh, athletic tech material hat okay, instead of okay. like, like, if you're wearing, if you're wearing like a backwards Siegelman stables hat, I'm like, okay, now you're doing, now you're trying to do a thing. Now you're doing something. You're right, doing a right, thing right now. Right. Whereas the other way looks like oh, I'm just running out of the house. I'm Chandler Bing right now. I'm just yeah. running some errands on a lazy <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think thumbs up on a backwards hat. Yeah, you're fine. It, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Last one here, uh, from TJ Chow. Gym shirts with shorter body length. Most go past my butt and look weird with five inch inseams. Uh, I'll take this one as a as a, I, as I a shorter guy. Most of my gym tops are Nike, and I do not have any of this. I do not have this issue. I will say, 
Every once in a while, I will order something from Nike that for some reason is like six inches longer than it should be. Yeah. So it's definitely, it's it, it can be hit or miss. But, start tucking um, in, dude. What's up? You should start tucking in like an 80s villain. Yeah. Just yeah. absolutely training. Maybe a, maybe a tuck in with a backwards hat. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen the Sylvester Stallone movie Over the Top? Uh, yeah. 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 That's, you, I turn the hat around. It's like a switch. <laughs> um, <laughs> it kind of is sometimes. Yeah, kind of is. But uh, but yeah, and then uh, Lulu. I don't think Lulu's tops are very long either. No, they're they, not. They, they, if they anything, they're they very trim fit. Yeah. Yeah. So N Nike and Lulu is where I would go. Uh, I've got some stuff from Roan that is a little bit on the longer side. And uh, and I think Aloe sometimes gets a little long too. But uh, but yeah, I, I, most- 10,000s shirts are pretty trim fit. Yeah. They make you okay. feel athletic though. Like okay. they, I don't feel like it's baggy. Like they, they are trim fit, but it- I like them. Do you, do you wear the 10,000 shirts at all, Randy? Did you get any of those? No. Okay, sorry. You can have some of mine. Okay. I, I might have, but I think it might have gone too small. Yeah. I, I do kind of feel like this in uh, in Roback sometimes if I'm wearing like five inch inseams and wearing a Roback uh, polo. Yeah, like I like uh, if I have, I like to offset a shorter inseam with, with something a little more cropped for sure. You don't yeah. want to feel like you're lampshading. Yeah. Yes. The other thing I was going to say here is that like I, I I prefer like a tech material or a dry fit top in the gym, but plenty of people just like rock old t-shirts. Yeah. And I always think it looks like I'm like, oh, that was cool. Yeah. They just don't do it. Oh, I used to wear the rattiest, grossest shirts that I had because I was like, well, I'm already going to sweat in them. I might as well wear this like disgusting yeah. one from soccer practice in high school. But yeah, mo most of the like the most of the Nike tops that are like specifically designed for training or working out or whatever that are that are that are dry fit not any of like the cotton blends yeah they they typically fit at a at a good length for yeah for smaller dudes yeah so what do we do with these articles of interest here, um let, let's bang through at least a few of them okay uh, let, let me just start with a couple that i had on my list because these, yeah. these, these are relatively quick the batanga you batanga, told batanga batanga how do we Bata say this batanga i don't know batanga sure yeah they were i think it's batanga 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 okay do you do you remember put putting this? Do you remember talking about this on the pod yeah. like six months ago? Yeah, and I thought and did, didn't we decide that it was like fake? So there it's was a Batanga week. A bunch of uh, so I think I think what actually happened was that it wasn't fake, but it was definitely generated by a bunch of mixologists or bartenders the, to to try to like show that you can make something popular just by being like yes. this is the new drink. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think batanga, that was part of it. But a Batanga is a real drink. Yes, it is basically a, and we've tried them. It, it we have. It's a ranch water with Mexican Coke instead of Topo Chico, or if you please, it's a Cuba Libre with tequila instead of rum. Yeah. Um. So it's 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 Mexican Coke tequila. But you have tequila to lime stir juice. it with the knife that you cut the lime yeah. juice with. Salted you have, and then you, yes, you do have to stir it with the knife that you that you cut the. They're lime fine, with. but I just don't see myself like keeping Coke around that much to make a bunch of batangas. I had to buy a Mexican. Your, your text about the batanga caught me right as I was at the grocery store, Perfect. and so I was able to procure Beer? a. a procure a Mexican coat. What? Did you do beer at the grocery store? Not that time, but I okay. did yesterday, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. Yes. Uh, had a grocery store beer for the first time in a minute. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's good. It's if you, especially if you like Coca-Cola, if you like soda, yeah. it, it works. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I, I think you and I are hesitant to put, to ever claim that a cocktail with a soda, with like a sugary soda, is in contention for drink of the summer. Yeah, it's just gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard for people to get over it. Yeah. It's, everyone's it's kinda, too anti-sugar right now. Yeah, and it's kind of like a Chico. Like, of course it tastes good. It's a fucking Coke, Coca-Cola. But think of how many people love like Diet Coke. It's kind of surprising that there's not a Diet Coke cocktail that's come out that like makes people who love Diet Coke just drink a ton of Diet Coke and- Skinny bitch? Whatever. Diet Coke and vodka, right? With yeah, wine? Diet Coke and like vanilla vodka was like a thing okay. when girls in college and stuff. <laughs> See, to me, I think those are two different things. I feel like that's a mixed drink compared to cocktails. To me, those are like two separate yes, categories. Yes, yes, yeah. That's a good point. That's a, that's well well put, Randy. Yeah. You're yeah. exactly right. Tasteful. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, we, I got to just at least look at some pictures from, from Charlie XCX's birthday party. If you weren't at this party, you're a nobody. <laughs> you're not anyone at this point. Pretty much. Like, yeah. she threw her birthday party at the perfect time. When she's peaking with Brat, she invited the right people. They got the yeah. right photographer, right space, right everything. They nailed the vibe. Like it, it. Uh, congratulations to Charlie XCX and all of her fame. Uh, how jealous were you of the uh, Parliament Genius. bouquet that Rosalia brought? Genius. Like it's just she's firing on all cylinders right now. 
I, look, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I, no, no guest at this party was more of a surprise than Glenn Powell. I know, <laughs> I, I know it's Glenn Powell summer, but he should, as, I, as well as Brad summer, but that, that's how, if, like you're saying, if you got invited to this party, you're, you have it going on right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, so we that, like Glenn that, Powell, but he's not Brad. He doesn't seem very Brad. He's not Brad. Dude. But I guess maybe he is a little bit. He's like Brad. the dad at this party. Did you see what he wore to this party? He's probably he, he, he no, what did he wear? He had like a big like oversized black t-shirt, back backwards hat. Backwards hat. There you go. Okay. Uh, okay. And um I he, he I don't know if he and Paul Mescal are beefing yet, but they might be because Glenn Powell's obviously been like, you know, on this big press tour with Daisy Edgar Jones and they're looking awfully cozy. And then apparently, thank you, Randy. Uh and then apparently he was um he was Dumas says that he was flirting with Gracie Abrams, who is apparently dating Paul. Did Mescal see that all night? Did see that? Even though another report says that he just popped in and was not here for very long. Oh man, who do I choose? But yeah, that's Glenn, hard. Is there? I, I could, there might be a little Glenn Paul beef coming down the coming down the pipe. <laughs> He's not baby girl, right? Glenn, we're not no, don't Glenn settle it with a kiss fight. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not putting Glenn on the watch list. Don't do a walk yet, off. Right? Um. I, I think we, well, l- let's just go right to it. Uh, I don't think that Glenn is is baby girl because he's too hunky. He's he's too much of a hunk. To I be a baby girl. don't think I've ever seen him do something fashion forward in yeah. my entire life. Yeah, he's, he's more of a traditional guy. Correct, yeah. And he's, I'm, he's, that's not a criticism. I'm just saying, like, I never have looked at Glenn Powell and been like, ooh, that, I like I like that style that he's doing right there. Like, I, I, I've i never done that with him. He looks good in clothes, like denim shirts and knit polos and Brioni suits, but, but he's not doing, like, yeah, yeah. He's, I, I, I mean, like, he's just so in the McConaughey playbook of knocking yes. out his rom-com and blockbuster era before he goes and dives in to, some to, his, to his first, like, oh, now I'm- Some ro- Oscar bait. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's it's inevitable. But the uh, the Guardian says that it's it's goodbye to hot rodent, hello, beefcake, <laughs> the return of the hunk. And, uh, and Glenn Powell is leading this off. Glenn Powell leads Hollywood's latest crop of muscled, charismatic men who quote look like they came out of a 3D printer, and then um, they they were they were not shy ab- about uh, <laughs> about what they wrote. Uh, consider Glenn Powell, the Texas-born Twister star who also appeared with Sydney Sweeney in last year's Anyone But You, seems to have been built in a lab, scientifically formulated to make sure there's not a dry seat in the theater. Will so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Guardian. Like I. I, I it's, um, now speaking of Paul, who, who is certified baby girl, uh, he is leaning into a bit of the hunk thing with, yeah. with gladiator two coming out later this year. It's so. true. Arms are big arms are going to be very in very soon. I, I just don't think that we can say rodents are gone just no. because hunks are, are good too. No. Were hunks ever out? No, I don't think so. No. I, yeah. my, one of my favorite memes going right now is just people tweeting like they're talking like uh, Barry Keoghan, which is only just them writing a normal sentence and then finishing it with the word porson. <laughs> it's kind of like an evil porson. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Actually, speaking of him, Sabrina Carpenter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His girlfriend, P- Barry Keoghan, uh, she now has a $23 smoothie at Erewhon. Sick. Uh, are, are you paying $23 for a smoothie at Erewhon? I, I will as soon as I'm in front of an Erewhon. I won't. Even if we had a beautiful Erewhon like down the street next door to here, I'm still never paying $23 for any smoothie. I refuse to do it. There, there's a place on South Congress. I think it's called like Sun Life Organics or whatever. I've gotten swind- I've gotten swindled in Austin for a $20 smoothie more that, than once. That, that is pushing like $18 smoothies. Well, the short and sweet is a tropical fruit base with creamy coconut, organic honey, and a dash of spirulina for a rich blue color. It's got collagen and pearl powder to support skin, hair, and nail health. A portion of the proceeds will go to the Jed Foundation, a nonprofit that supports mental health for teens and young adults. I'm glad that a portion of the $23 is going to charity. That makes me feel better about it. Makes me feel great about it. I'm going to go support. I'm, uh, even if we had one, I'd still go to Soup Peddler and support the small man, the small hippies down the street. I want them to thrive. Yeah. I want yeah. them. I want their. I, I want them to have things on their. Uh, their billboard outside of their place that they put on there. I want I want to rethink my entire life based on the random <laughs> shit they put up there. <laughs> on their musings. It's happened more than once. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that, it, that if we had an Erewhon in Austin, I would be frequenting it. I'm saying that the, that the next time I'm in LA, like, will I be making a journey to get a Haley Bieber, Sabrina Carpenter, or, you know, hopefully a Charlie XCX, uh, Brat, Bright oh, Green. Give her a Brat smoothie. Bright Green smoothie. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm going to do that. Yeah. 
You ready to move to wish list? Let's do wish list. All right, Will. I uh, I'll go first today. Uh, I mentioned that I might have a J Crew item. Yeah, I'm 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 very happy with what you're doing here. Did I, you talk about barn coats recently on a digest or a scaries? Oh, I talked about them in the studio behind the scenes, Barrett. You did, but did, I you, have a, did I have you not a, mention barn coats on a scaries uh, newsletter? I probably have. Maybe you did. I love a barn coat. Uh, I my biggest regret of the last few years is that uh, a few years ago I got a really cheap barn coat from J Crew that looks very similar to this inexpensive barn coat, not cheap. And I bought it in a size large because I wanted it to be a little oversized. And because it was oversized, I stopped. I didn't wear it as much as I thought I would because it was really given a lot. Okay. And uh, I, I, I ended up donating it. And mm. I regret donating it because now I would do anything to have that exact yeah, barn coat yeah. back. I also had an issue with it where uh, it was it got washed in a way that it shouldn't be washed. Okay. And it kind of didn't look the same after, so I didn't feel as bad about donating it. But I have been craving one ever since, and I think that right now you need to. If you're going to get a barn coat, do it right now because I think they're I think they're going to be very popular this fall. Yeah, um, this is the limited edition 1983 Heritage Barn Jacket from J Crew in uh, in Bone Khaki. I, this is an item that I saw in store. I did not get a chance to try this on, but it looked beautiful on the rack. Which again, th- that that is something that has been lacking in my J crew experiences over the last several years is that when I go into the store and I look at the stuff, it, it, it has no rack appeal. Yeah. It might be fine. It might, it might look good once it's on your body, but like I, I'm not touching and feeling and looking and saying, Ooh, I kind of want this. Yeah. And there were several things in store this last time around that made me feel that way. This barn, this, the, this barn, barn jacket was, uh, was, was probably the top. Now, this is higher quality than the one that I own. Speaking of sizing, the last time that I tried out a J. Crew piece of outerwear, it was a little too slim and long. And so I and and based on the pictures, I'm worried that this one might be the same. I'm also just not sure how much like a barn jacket goes with my own personal style at the moment, but I it I really like this one. It looked great. I'm willing to give this a shot uh this fall. And um and and it's not a bad price for under 200 bucks. It's not. I just signed up for alerts if they bring the classic olive back in. Uh, because we are not, because you know we're going to be having a couple of weeks off here. I'm, I'm just. It, you, you had two on your wish list, so I'm just, I'm throwing another one out. I there. want to be a bad boy. Uh, this is a, a capital rugby that's on Canoe Club right now. I love, I love your shift of fault. You're shifting vibes without even like announcing. <laughs> and I just, I, the lime green and the brown and the black and the white shouldn't go together here. It is nice. But man, they really, really do. It is nice. Yeah. This only comes in one size, so I'm pretty sure it would be absolutely massive on me. So it's more of just like an object of of, uh, of desire and a beautiful aesthetic that I appreciate more than a probably going to buy. It kind of gives me- It's like, also like crazy expensive. So kind of gives me the vibe of like a, a gelato shop. Yeah. You've got the black case, and then you've got the chocolate, the pistachio, and the, pistachio. And the vanilla, and you're just cooking in this thing. Great call. Great call. <laughs> but a beautiful rugby from Capital. It is nice. It is nice. What do you got? I've got two. Got a pair of shorts. Uh, this company, Thames, I've been following them for a long time, and I just think they make kind of cool out there stuff, and I th- thought these shorts were pretty in my wheelhouse. I almost bought them the other day, but I kind of hesitated. I didn't want to I didn't want to just buy something because I feel like I need to buy stuff before going on a trip, so I'm just kind of marinating on it, putting them here as a little placeholder, but they're kind of cool. They're kind of like this, like, uh, I don't even know how to describe the material. Scratchy? Crepey? Crepey. Crepey material. Yeah. Thames, they make some pretty out there, outrageous stuff, but like they've got some cool stuff. There's going to be something in my collection from Thames at some point. You, uh, you're going to get the matching, uh, matching hat? No, no, I'm not going to no. go matching hat. Okay. The hat was kind of giving me Eminem vibes. Oh, yeah, with that little logo on the side. Right? Yeah. It's a side <laughs> logo, dude. Like it's so Eminem. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. You're, <laughs> you're not wrong. The other thing I had on my wish list is a uh, hat tip Gian. Uh, it's the, uh, him and the mule boys put up a little, uh, thing about the tame Impala mules with APC. I love these things. I did, love these things. Did you know that tame Impala is one guy? No. Does that blow your mind? Yeah. Also, I, I might be wrong about that. I think I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think I heard that somewhere. Recently. I just think these are nice looking mules. I'm not going to buy them, but I'm going to put them on my wish list so that if I ever see something similar, I can just like hop on it. But I've been loving a mule lately. My Birkenstocks are disgusting. So I either need to clean those aggressively or just completely get rid of them. Yeah, Wikipedia. Tame Impala is the psychedelic music project of Australian multi-instrumentalist Kevin Parker. Okay. Shout out to Kevin. He does have, uh, there are other guys that are playing some of the instruments, but like he is. He's the brain of it. He is, he is Tame Impala. Okay. So. Okay. I do have a wish list review. I bought something. It's right here. 
We talked about it, I think, last week because I was talking about how I needed a swimsuit. Um, the, the, these made your wish list a few weeks back. Yeah. yeah. And so I put these on the wish list. Um, Reepa Reepa swimsuit. Uh, I ended up going with the more kind of rust and orange vignette with some water mm, in it. Mm, mm. And uh, I have to say, I'm very impressed. Very happy with this. These do look very Euro European vacation. Exactly. You, they you, they you, are. You did well. They... Um, the they feel high quality. Mesh, I don't, ba mesh basket liner. Yep. yep. It's kind of the micro mesh. It's not like the big one. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say, if I could change one thing about these from a fit standpoint, the li the liner does ride up pretty pretty significantly. Okay. But I think that's just kind of the nature of the beast at this point. Uh, the packaging was great. Uh, it came quickly. They do their sizing uh, very European, and so I even though I usually will get a medium in bottoms. I decided that because this is an Italian brand shipping from Italy, I'm going to trust their size chart okay. to a T. So I bought large, which normally that would come in and be, I'd be swimming in it. It yep. looked very blousy, big. These were perfect. Did they tell you to size up or did you go off measurements? Uh, I went off just straight measurements. Yeah, yeah, I okay. just trusted the measurements and yep. went with it. And I'm really glad I did because I almost went medium and large and I would have definitely sent the medium back. And so yep. going large was the move. True to size uh, or true to measurement, whatever you want to call it. What What is the fabric? Uh, let's see. Let's see. It says 100% polyamide. Okay. I don't know what that is. Not a fabric boy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, happy with the purchase. Like I, I immediately knew, yep, these are coming on vacation with me and I'm keeping them and That's I'm excited great. to replace my old Drake ones. And honestly, these have the very similar quality to my old Drake ones and half the price. Don't look up. Uh, I, I did some acrobatics to, to put the, the Vinny's fisherman loafers on screen, but, uh, just a quick review on them. It, exactly what I wanted. I did end up keeping, I ordered the black and the Brown. I kept the black. They were more the vibe, uh, just more, more intentional. I like the black. And, uh, and I honestly, like I, maybe I'm just explore page coded right now, but I keep just like getting dressed and I'll just put them on to see what they look like. They, they, they kind of feel like they go with everything. I think they kind of do. Like I'm, I think they I'm do. In a, I'm in a graphic tee and black shorts today and i was like these kind of work yeah you're opening up your world barrett uh so yeah big fan and um and 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 yeah if you're out there looking i i i do recommend the vinnies they they seem good so far so stoked to stoked to flex these maybe i'll get some fisherman sandals in, in italy maybe that'll be my italy M maybe, ex exactly i'm sure there are some, there are pairs over there big All one right. yeah all right we'll get out of here enjoy your sunday we'll see you guys later bye-bye